Today I want to show you how to use temporary access pass in Microsoft Enter ID. Temporary access pass is a generated passcode that you, or better said, your users can use for authentication instead of their password and standard multi-factor authentication methods. Because temporary access pass is very important for scenarios such as new user onboarding or enrollment to standard multi-factor authentication. Before temporary access pass has been introduced, there was the chicken egg problem. Because when you had a new user, the new user didn't have any multi-factor authentication methods enrolled and the user was not able to securely sign in to, for instance, new devices that were um, Intune managed uh, Microsoft Enter ID joined. Because usually there is Windows Hello for Business configured and Windows Hello for Business specifically always should require multi-factor authentication for enrollment. Or if users are trying to enroll multi-factor authentication to their mobile app on their phones, also the process should be secure, which means that the process should be protected by some form of multi-factor authentication. But because of the chicken egg problem, users are unable to use any multi-factor authentication because they are just enrolling their first multi-factor authentication. So the way how this was usually done in the past was that there were um, exceptions configured, exclusions configured in conditional access policies for new users and so on, but that's not secure. Much better is to use temporary access pass because temporary access pass is a passcode that's generated that has some time boundaries defined. So it has a start time and end time. You can also enforce one time use for the passcodes and this temporary access pass then satisfy the requirements for multi-factor authentication and also bypasses the standard password uh, requirement. So then your users use the temporary access pass not only to satisfy the MFA requirement, but they also use it instead of their password. So they don't actually need to know their password. This is also a very good solution for um, passwordless scenarios. So imagine that your company is, com uh, is completely passwordless. You use Windows Hello for Business on uh, corporate computers. Uh, you use passwordless authentication via the Microsoft Authenticator application for any other scenario. And you want to be fully passwordless. Then, even for the initial onboarding, you can use temporary access pass to allow the user to finish the initial onboarding of their Microsoft Authenticator application or enrollment to Windows Hello for Business. So it's a very powerful option of authentication, uh, which is unfortunately not very well known. And that's the reason for this video, because I want to show you how to use it effectively. Before you can start using temporary access passes for authentication, you need to enable it. So go to Microsoft Enter ID, expand this manage part and go to security then expand again the manage part and go to authentication methods. Here you see that one of the policies that you can configure is the temporary access pass policy. So open the temporary access pass policy and first go to configure. On the configure tab, you define the minimum lifetime, maximum lifetime of the generated passcode default lifetime of the generated passcode and if you want to enforce one time use or not. You can also configure the length of the generated passcode. If I go to edit, you can change default values here. Uh, you can change also the length. But what I want to talk about for a moment is the require one time use. From the security point of view, it's more secure when you require one-time use because then you technically ensure that when the passcode is used for the first time it cannot be used again 
it's invalidated after first usage. So even if it leaks afterwards, it doesn't work any longer. On the other hand, there are some limitations because some of the processes or workflows that you want to cover with temporary access passes potentially may require multi-use because for instance part of the enrollment pro pro process users will need to use the passcode multiple times so you need to think about it if it's actually feasible to enforce one-time use or if you need to turn it off because by default it's off so by default multi-use is allowed all right let's go back to enable and target you can enable it for all users you can put some groups to exclusions or you can enable it only for selected groups and here is another thing to consider in general Temporary access pass should be enabled only for regular user accounts. Temporary access pass should not be enabled for privileged accounts. That's the reason why you should not target all users, but you should target only selected groups. Or on the other hand, exclude, if you target all users, exclude groups with your privileged user accounts. But usually what I recommend is include selected groups and add a group or groups with your regular employee accounts. So in my case, it's this group uh, of all employees. All user accounts, regular user accounts of all of my employees are here in this group. Privileged accounts are not in the group. So privileged accounts will not be able to use temporary access pass for authentication. So I will choose select. And I can just click save. I will not save it because this is just my demo environment. Um, so this is for the policies. Now we have enabled usage of temporary access pass in general. There is one more thing that you should or need to configure and it's part of the authentication strengths. Because by default, there are three authentication strengths or strength groups configured. Phishing resistant and passwordless MFA uh, authentication strengths groups don't include temporary access pass. So if I open it, you see the temporary access pass is not here and also not here. The multi-factor authentication, authentication strength includes also temporary access pass in both one-time use and also multi-use. And here is the important question or a thing to consider. So if you use this built-in multi-factor authentication, uh, authentication strength, you are good to go and temporary access pass is automatically allowed. On the other hand, if you have configured your own custom authentication strengths, such as this case with this tenant, with this standard MFA authentication strength, you need to make sure that temporary access pass is actually one of the allowed methods for authentication. As you can see, it is here, but only for one-time use. So users will not be able to use the multi-use passcodes uh, for scenarios where conditional access policies require this specific authentication strength. Of course, you can edit it. So I can go here, click edit, and I can also add the multi-use temporary access pass option. So what I'm going to show you is that you should configure this according to your needs. So if you want to require one-time use or multi-use, um, if you use custom authentication strengths, it needs to be configured properly. All right, that's all for the preparation part. Now, let me show you how to actually use temporary access pass. So if you go to users, Let's open one test user. We can go to manage authentication methods. And here you see you can add a new authentication method. So I click this button and choose method temporary access pass. If you haven't enabled the policy, you will not for temporary access pass, you will not see this option here. But because I have enabled it, 
I see this option here. I can select the option. I can configure the option as well. So you can configure delayed start time. This is very useful for scenarios for new hires, for example, because what organizations usually do, they prepare uh, the accounts for new hires in advance. So like a day before or so. Uh, and with this, you can also prepare a temporary access pass for them in advance so that the start time will be, for example, tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. You can also configure the activation duration, uh, but it needs to be within the, uh, the, the borders of the configured policy. So in my case, it, the default is one hour. It can be up to four hours, but I can go beyond uh, in what's allowed in the policy. And also, as you can see, one time use is enforced by the policy, which means that I cannot disable it. But if uh, multi-use is enabled in the policy, you can potentially configure whether or not you enforce one time, one time use for the temporary access pass. All right, so let's create a new temporary access pass that I want um, to be effect, um, the effective start date will be now. So I uncheck this delay start time and click add. Now you see that it has generated a new temporary access pass for this user account. You see that the pass is valid from now. It's valid until, uh, or it's valid for four hours. And you see also when it was created, which is the same as the valid from, but if you configure delayed start, the, the time and date potentially will be different. Then it also suggests the URL that users can use to register the st standard MFA, which is this aka.ms my security info. And let me quickly show you how to use the temporary access pass. So I have this user open also here to just to copy the username. And I will use a new in private browser window to sign in to this user account. So I just paste the username. And as you can see, as I've already mentioned, temporary access pass automatically replaces not only or not automatically satisfies multi-factor authentication requirements, but it also replaces passwords. And you can see it here. I just type in the username. And instead of password, it automatically asks for the temporary access pass that was generated for this account. So I can go back, copy the temporary access pass and paste it here and I'm in. I've successfully signed in with the temporary access pass and it didn't even ask me for the password. That's the way how you can be fully passwordless from the very beginning of the user journey. So that password is not needed even for the initial user onboarding, initial configuration of Windows Hello for Business, initial enrollment to passwordless authentication methods via Microsoft Authenticator and so on. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you find it useful. Please share this video with your peers, with your colleagues, because I think it's quite important to spread the word about temporary access passes, because that's very effective and much more secure way of user onboarding than configuring exclusions for conditional access policies. Don't forget to follow my cybersecurity world blog. You can also follow my profile on LinkedIn and Twitter. You can find me by the Lucas Baran name. And every weekend I publish a weekly newsletter where I summarize everything that happened in the past week in the world of IT and cybersecurity. You can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and also some other platforms. And that's really all from my side for today. So thanks again for watching and see you next time.